Wow, you're very talented. <laughs> a little bit complicated and awkward, but That's very right. talented. Mostly awkward, a <laughs> little bit talented. <laughs> so you're now the CEO of Zuckerberg Media. Yes. It's a company that is changing the face of innovation, really. And uh, we're all gathered here tonight, Randy, to learn more about the path that got you to where you are today. Uh. Your company's mission is to inspire kids to embrace the power of science and technology. So I'm wondering, how did you feel about science and technology as you were growing up? It's a great question. I actually, I was very lucky. My father, uh, growing up, he's a dentist. His office was in our home. And uh, he always was bringing home these weird and wacky gadgets. I remember when I was about eight or nine years old, he brought this humongous computer home that could take two people and swap their smiles. Now, today, you can do that with a Snapchat filter, so that's not even that big a deal. But you know, back in you know, the late 80s, it was so exciting. So I feel like I was very lucky to always have that. The place where, when I look back, I feel like I was failed without people knowing it is that uh, people always told me that I could have any job I wanted, but not one person in my life told me I could create any job I wanted. And uh, I don't think we say that to young girls enough. Uh, I think that when I went out to Silicon Valley, no one had put in, the, in my mind that I could create something or be an entrepreneur or that I could take ownership for that. And uh, if I hadn't gotten lucky to get that phone call from my brother and go into that atmosphere, I, I don't know that I would have discovered that to this day. That other Zuckerberg. The other one that, you know, hopefully you've all forgotten about by this time. <laughs> so you mentioned uh, graduating in Harvard. You didn't say in which specialty, though. Yes, uh, I, did, I studied psychology. Um, I wish, you know, going back though, if I could do things differently, I definitely would have studied computers, at least taken a few coding classes, because I think every single company today is a tech company. It doesn't matter what industry, it doesn't matter where you're working, we all need, you know, you have English, French, and code. <laughs> Add a third, third national language. So how did your passion for that field begin? Um, I really, you know, I think one of the things that I love to talk to people about is that I think people have this misconception that to be in the tech industry, you have to be a hardcore computer programmer. And one of the things I've loved is seeing just how many, the huge breadth of jobs there is to work in the tech industry. Even if you never want to write a line of code, you can have an incredibly meaningful and important job in the technology industry. Um, I think we lose a lot of women, especially because they don't realize that. Um, design is becoming a hugely important growing field. Product management is something that every company needs, incredible leaders that can bridge the gap between marketing and the engineers. And so there are so many careers in tech that, that anyone can have that don't even just involve sitting in a computer coding all day. I mean, few, few industries will shift the way that people live and the way that they conduct themselves the way the technology does. Yes. And people are inventing things to solve other people's problems, even problems we didn't even know we had in the first place. Uh, now, there's a lot of students. There's several hundreds of students yeah. who are here. Vous êtes là, les étudiants, les étudiantes? It's amazing. Amazing. So what do you tell them when they are wondering which career path they should follow. What is your yes. advice to these students today? Okay, well first I have an ask, which is that when you create the next amazing uh, companies of the world, please hire me. <laughs> so hopefully this whole thing was just one big job interview for the amazing things you're gonna do. But um, I think the most amazing thing is that the jobs that all of you will have in five, 10 years from now don't even exist today. And that's what I think is so exciting about it because if I had set out when I was a young girl, you know, I never could have said, I want to create a social media platform. That wasn't a thing that existed. That wasn't a dream that we could have. But now in the post kind of Facebook creation era, when I think about how many industries have sprung up because of social media, because of all of these inventions, who knows? the amazing jobs that we're all going to have and the careers we're going to have. So I just think, you know, 
Stay as curious as you possibly can. Learn as much as you can. Keep your eyes open because you never know when a great opportunity is going to come to you. And try to, you know, coming to events like this is amazing, the networking and, and meeting people. So what did you learn from your years working in Silicon Valley as mm. a young woman there? Yes. One of the few. <laughs> Although, you know, over email I'd act like a guy, so oh, there yeah. you go. <laughs> but um, I, you know, I, Silicon Valley is amazing. Uh, the one thing I will say, though, is that it is a one industry town. Everyone there only works in technology, that's it. Um, I remember going to my dentist there and mid-checkup he was saying, oh, so I'm working on this app that I'd like to pitch to you. And that was the moment I knew that I had to leave Silicon Valley. But one thing that I honestly feel a little envious of when I come to an amazing city like Montreal is that it's very rare to have the opportunity to sit in a technology hub like this that is also a hub for finance and media and, and so many other industries because you can all grow and work together. I think in Silicon Valley, we sometimes lost a little bit because we didn't have that perspective of other industries. We were all in this echo chamber where everyone's like, tech is gonna save the world and yeah. And Maybe it is, but also maybe we could have benefited from a few people in other industries being like, take it down a few notches. And uh, that's why I think it's an incredible thing to be in a city like this that is, you know, an artificial intelligence capital of the world, but also surrounded by so many other industries. Well, if you do decide to move here, we can facilitate visa formalities. Yes. Just let us know. You heard it here. <laughs> What have been the different challenges and opportunities that you've seen women face in large companies compared to startups? Mm. I think, um, you know, I, I mentioned a little bit during uh, when I was talking about Facebook Live. I think women often don't put themselves out for big opportunities because they feel like they have to be incredibly qualified in order to, to reach for that next big project or that promotion. They apologize, they internalize things. and. When I think back on my time and, I, and that pivotal moment in my mind where I said, you know, what would my male colleagues do? And that's what I did. If I hadn't made that mental adjustment in that moment, I probably wouldn't even be on this stage today. Uh, so for me, it was always kind of a constant tweaking and kind of going against what my, by nature I felt like I should do and uh, kind of reprogramming myself to succeed in that corporate world. So do you think society programs us to be maybe more guarded and wait to be perfect before we raise our hands for an opportunity? Yes, absolutely. And I know we were talking about that backstage before that um, we kind of, we teach boys to be smart and to take risks and to go for it. And we teach girls to be perfect and buttoned up. And, um, and I, I think, It definitely, that's why so much of my work now focuses on children and, and media and entertainment because I think there is so much reprogramming that we need to do right. in parents and educators and how we speak to children and how we kind of put dreams in their heads. Um, and uh, that really needs to be a full circle effort. And that's why I'm so excited to see so many companies that are here today supporting this. Absolutely, full circle, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I definitely agree, we need to look at every level. Uh, at Women in Governance, we tend to focus on you know, the women who want to be in the decision-making bodies, but if we take them too late, um, yes. you know, we, we really need to, uh, to take the time and maybe do a hackathon. My team is here, yes. so you know we will do an all-nighter. and try Doesn't to have to be, doesn't have to be, yes. Okay, They're wow. up for it, they're up for it. I don't think I've ever heard anyone so excited to pull an all-nighter, but I, I think that's a great idea. You, um, I mean, you'd surprise yourself, honestly, in what you'd come up with in one hour. Just one hour of putting your phone aside and just giving yourself permission to be really creative, you will delight yourself with the ideas that people come up with. But I will say I feel hopeful about the world. I think um, even in Silicon Valley where numbers have been very low, we're starting to see more women starting companies, more women who are investing and who are in the decision making. So I do think that you know the efforts that all of us have been putting in are really starting to pay off. Yes. 
I agree. And it's not going to be an hour. It's going to be eight, by the way. <laughs> um, and my last question, I would spend the whole evening with you here, but there are two other <laughs> wonderful women who will join you uh, soon. Uh, so my last question to you, and what are some of the notable differences in tech today mm -hmm. compared to when you started in 2005? Yes. Um, one of the things that I think is interesting is uh, when, when I was first starting with social media, it was all about just getting eyeballs, getting as many eyeballs as you could and, and having those connections. Right. I think the companies that are starting today are really seeking deeper engagement with customers, are really thinking about you know, very difficult, challenging problems and how to tackle them and solve them. And uh, I'm really excited by so, even so much of the technology that I see on this stage is, um, is really incredible. So I think the pendulum is shifting back from just creating websites that attract as many clicks and eyeballs as possible to people really wanting that, that deeper engagement and, and that um, you know, real problem solving. And in terms of female presence? Mm. I, for me, I think it's a really exciting time to be uh, a female founder in technology, especially there are so many platforms now for fundraising. Um, when I was first starting in Silicon Valley, it was really the traditional venture capital money, and that's it. Now there are so many angel investors, crowdfunding platforms. Um, there, you know, there's so many ways to get your voice heard. There's incubators and accelerators in every single city in the world. That wasn't something that you could find 10 years ago. So um, I think this is by far the most exciting time that it's ever been to found a tech company, whether uh, for, you're a female founder, a male founder, or uh, anywhere in between. And uh, I think it's... Um, I would really encourage everyone to go out there. There's no good time to take a risk and to go for it. So, you know, why not go for it right now? Absolutely. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> Any last piece of advice for the girls specifically? We love you, boys, to be here and to support the girls. But yes. any last piece of advice for girls I guess, to really uh, make a decision? Gosh. The one thing I'll say is that um, when I created my TV show Dot with the CBC here, I decided to write myself in as a character. Mm -hmm. uh, I voiced myself, and what I learned is that when you own the casino, you can play in it whenever you want, is what I learned. And so my entire life to that point, I had been waiting for someone else to tell me I could be an actress, someone to cast me, someone could do this. And what I finally realized was all I had to do was just write the show on my own, and then I could do whatever I wanted with it. So um, that's why for all, especially the women in the audience who are thinking about starting your own company, I loved working at Facebook, I loved being in Silicon Valley, but even my worst day working for myself is still better than my best day working for someone else. Well said, well said. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Thank so, you so much. much. Thank, Thank you. you, I appreciate it.